Man, if he's not careful, he might just find himself in the Norris conversation. What are you talking about? Fox is always in the Norris conversation. Who the hell is Adam Fox? I'm talking about Eric Gustafson. Hi, I'm Weston. I love talking about the Rangers, and I'm here to talk about Game 6 of the regular season, where the Rangers win 3-1 to over the Calgary Flames in a game where Igor was absolutely spectacular, and the offense scored three goals, and by God, I can't remember any of them. Before we get to the good part of this game, which is the three straight unanswered goals by the Rangers, let's talk about the Calgary Flames goal, and WHAT IS THAT?! Hockey's a fast game, and I understand that. When there's chaos behind the net and one guy just happens to wiggle free from his mark and then drives past the goaltender and is able to put a tip in, I get how that can happen. Blake Coleman was just sitting directly in front of Igor Shosturkin like, God, wouldn't it be funny if a puck came to me right now? And then it did. It wasn't even like he one-timed it. He held the puck for a second in almost disbelief that he was where he was and then got a puck. So the Rangers leave the first period down by a goal, but the second period came and it was far more fruitful for the offense. First goal for the Rangers, Eric Gustafson out of the blue line just throws it on net in the waning seconds of a power play, hoping for something good, and there was something good. Alexi Lafreniere, who finally has seemingly arrived, already his third goal of the season. Lafreniere has played really, really well. Power play wise, he's looked good. Five on five, he's looked good. He looks more confident. He's actually getting in the way of pucks. It's a beautiful thing. It's just a beautiful thing. A beautiful drive by, by Lafreniere. And the Rangers have a goal. It's tied one apiece. And then about seven minutes after that, the Rangers on another power play in the waning seconds. Artemi Panarin does a little Panarin scooch thing. Gives it to Chris Kreider with the tip in just silky hands. I can't stress it enough. Chris Kreider has some of the best net front hands in the league already is fifth goal of the year for chris Kreider and the rangers all right now they're up two to one and then in the waning minutes of the second period the final rangers goal the final goal in this game keandre miller across the blue line over to philip heedle fires on net markstrom can't quite smother it it just squeaks through his five hole it's just sitting dead in the crease and eric gustafson who came shooting in like a missile beats a flames defender and markstrom himself to the puck just slides it on home and the Rangers have a 3-1 lead, which would be your final score. So the three Rangers goals in this game were fundamentally sound. They were perfectly good goals. Really good position from Lafreniere, really good position from Kreider, both in where he was as a human being and where his stick was, and a nice job of not giving up on the play and chasing down the puck for Eric Gustafson. Those are cool things. Any goal in a game where your team ties the game or takes a lead or extends a lead is exciting. I cheered when they tied it at one apiece and when they went up 2-1 and when they went up 3-1, I was happy. But like none of these goals are insane. They're not like put your hands on your head, freak out over it. They were just good, technically sound goals. And that's really where I'm almost more excited it's a lot of fun where our time panarin puts a couple of defenders in a blender and then goes backhand top shelf to score a goal or where alexi lafreniere turnstiles a goalie going through his legs to put it past him those are really really fun but the past two seasons watching this team has felt like watching a collection of stars just kind of do their own thing with no semblance of structure or anything they are just players who happen to be playing at the same time as one another it looks like just a generic local rink pickup game a lot of times for the Rangers, or at least it has in the past few seasons. Now, they finally look like an actual team of players who like practice with each other and know what they're supposed to do and have a structure and by God, it's nice. It feels like they are relearning the fundamentals of how to score goals and how to do hockey correctly. And in some weird way, it's exciting to watch them score boring goals because they just kind of haven't been doing that. A lot of their goals are breakdowns or desperation and seeing them just score good, fundamentally sound goals is refreshing. But that's the offense. What about the defense in this game? I thought it was oh so much of a mixed bag. Miller Truba looked fantastic. They might be the best defensive pair the Rangers have this season. Tonight, they led the team in time on ice as a pair and also had the lowest uh, on ice expected goals against from Money Puck. They looked great. They looked absolutely fantastic. Truba and Miller are passing the eye test and they are passing the advanced analytics test this season. They 
look phenomenal. Again, it is absolutely bonkers what happens when you give a very good, very physical, very stay-at-home defenseman who is a veteran in Jacob Truba and a young gun in Keandre Miller who is just... Sky is the limit. There is no cap on how good he can be in this league. When you give them structure, it's crazy what they can actually do. Outside of them, the defense was kind of sketch. 25 shots against is not bad. And I want to say it was about 3.2 expected goals against. And that isn't bad. I think that might be a little deceiving. I thought the Flames had a lot of really, really good shots in this game. And I thought Igor had to make some really good saves. It felt like the defense was giving up either no shot on net or high danger. The defense was very mixed. What was not mixed was Igor Shosturkin. Utterly fantastic. We have seen a lot of Igor Shosturkin making crazy saves with the blocker or crazy saves with the glove. What we do not appreciate enough is Igor's legs. He makes unbelievable pad saves. The flexibility he has to get his left leg or his right leg over is just fantastic. People will endlessly praise his glove, his positioning, and how he moves around, but it is so under appreciated how good he is at just sealing the ice and keeping his legs strong to keep the puck out. It's, it might be the most underrated part of his game. Shesterkin was utterly fantastic tonight. A massive reason is why the Rangers were able to win this game. And the Rangers leave now the second game of the road trip with a second win on the road trip. Not too shabby. So the Rangers now have an off day before playing the Edmonton Oilers Thursday night at 9 p.m. Eastern. I'll be here afterwards to talk about that game, and I'll also be here tomorrow night. Not here here, but I'll be making a video. There's going to be a podcast over on the Rangers Game Plan podcast channel between me and Evan where we discuss the past four games. So that'll be Arizona, Nashville, Seattle, and tonight. You guys should definitely go over there and check it out and subscribe if you haven't already. We That is a very fun passion project between me and Evan. I love working on that one and making videos. That'll come out tomorrow night, but as for right now, that is all I have to say. So, if you enjoyed this video, please consider to like and subscribe. Thank you all so very much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely fantastic day, and as always, go Rangers!